My name is uh, Sharon E. Green and I teach Annie Bellum America here at the University of Alabama and this is a project that my students are completing this semester, it's actually done now. We are participating in Slow Art Day which is April 2nd, 2022. It's a global movement. The last time I checked we were one of three universities in the country participating. It's mostly museums and galleries so I'm really proud of them. University of Georgia, Athens, and MIT are participating as well. Two museums in Ukraine were scheduled to participate but here's the thing we're really interested in engaging the slow art concept be more present to think through ideas and what we see and even what we create. So this semester we've been engaging James Scott's Weapons of the Week thesis, which allows us to think through how everyone, even the person you think has absolutely no power, is daily trying to survive. What does that look like before the Civil War? You might consider the so-called Southern Belle. I have a student who's in uh, gender race studies and uh, political science program. She actually engages this idea of what is a Southern Belle. So when we think of a Southern Belle as being someone who is merely complicit with the darkest moments of the antebellum period, she situates the Southern Belle as being someone who's actually as thoughtful and as witty as the men around her. Sarah Gale, mother of Amelia Gale Gorgas, she kept a diary and when you read her words, you get some sense that she was more than the wife of John Gale, who was our governor when this university opened in 1831. She was someone who observed everything around her. At one point, she's upset because her husband uh, gave away things she inherited to pay off his drunken brother's debts. She kept that diary because she wanted her daughters to be stronger in the years ahead. And indeed, Amelia Gale Gorgas, for whom this house is named and for whom our library is named, if I got it right, when her husband got ill Josiah. She was not only our university's librarian, she was the nurse and the post mistress. So this is like real girl power. So like what does this mean with other historical actors in view including Horace King, a once enslaved man who had the skills to design a lot of buildings and bridges here in the South that ushered in a more modern moment with Senator Robert Jimmonson Jr., a planter, a slaveholder, which is really complicated. But they're thinking through how Horace was actually someone hired by a powerful senator. The senator was his client. So there's this power flux that we don't usually think about. But what I really love about what happened here is not only do we have those historical actors in view, we have the students thinking through their own origin stories. So some of them are of Irish descent. Some of them, you know, have very different backgrounds, but they put a a little bit of themselves into this narrative. In one case, you have a student whose family's wreath, hair wreath, back in the days when you couldn't send a text message or a letter, you may never see your relative again, you would take a lock of your hair and you would take a lock of another relative's hair and you create this wreath. And she has a wreath that survives from the antebellum period. So of course it's not here, but she took a photograph of it. And there are also heirlooms from her family, including um, an ancestor who was alive during the Civil War. The words that he wrote um, are on display too. We have students doing any number of things, including being thoughtful about the days through which we're living. One student, her burlap has peace, please. She's someone who really wants to invite us to think about how we have more in common than we tend to think about. There's another student who also uses the word unity up there and I think that they took the cue to reach across the aisle without being overtly obvious about it. I just said we're going to build community. We have burlap partly because I craft a lot so during the pandemic I just wanted a couple of pieces of burlap but one vendor sent me a box of burlap. I could literally sit in the box I had that much burlap, so I decided to get my students to use this burlap. So not only are they doing this project, on the last day of class, we're going to restitch this with more burlap, and we will have a 63-foot long piece, literally a huge quilt, that we will drop from the third floor of the former Woods Hall, which is where our campus was centered after it was burned following the Union soldiers' arrival. And the idea there is that we get away from words from a moment. We go back to that shared experience. And I've already dropped it. <laughs> it's 63 foot long, you know, trial run with my husband, who's also a professor here. It was a windy day and it was so beautiful. So in that way, we're engaging all kinds of, of things. What we see, what we hear, what we feel. 
and it doesn't even have to be explicit. And I think slow art allows you to do things like that. Of course, we're here in the South, <laughs> and burlap is a big part of, of how we decorate. In fact, when we were first putting the initial pieces together on Manderson and on the former Woods Call Quad, people thought we were planning a wedding and we were decorating for the wedding because burlap is everywhere. I was like, no, it's a student project, and, but they got it. We're here in the South where burlap reigns with the burlap in particular, there are opportunities, and this is what I hope my students are getting out of it, to have a cue, and our cue in this case is Antebellum America, but also slow art, slowing down. Just sit with those ideas and have no expectations. And if, even if you're viewing it, take in what you're seeing and just breathe through it. And I think that's what's so cool. In fact, we have the process never sleeps here, not only because Nick Saban, our head football coach, always talks about process. How do you get to the end zone? You can't think about the end zone. You have to think about which step comes next. How do you get to the next yard? And if you stay focused on the now, you will get to the end zone if you're executing as you've been trained to do. And the same is true here. How do you get to the next step? Sometimes getting to the next step is just breathing, being present, staying focused, slowly. This shared experience is one I hope you never forget. We're certainly living in times we'll never forget. And it's, I think, a wonderful opportunity to know that the antebellum period is not that far behind us. We think, oh my God, 160, 70 years was a long time ago. But it's actually, I think, a wonderful testament to how far we've come that we're actually spending time together this semester. So that's what it's all about. But we slowly think through these things. When I tell you only two days ago, some students who are like, I'll just write the essay, they're like, I wanna do the burlap. So it was like absolutely funny to see them grab the burlap and within 48 hours create something that is going to, I hope, stay on their minds for the rest of their lives. Certainly when I was an undergrad, I had professors who challenged me in this way. And so I'm doing the same.